Hey everyone, I'm Jason Peacock. Welcome to Jason Talks About Games. Now I haven't done one of these in a while, uh, over a month, and I've just been busy with other things. Um, I've still been playing lots of games, and I wanted to change up my format a bit. So I think I'm just gonna talk about four specific games and um, hopefully start doing these more regularly again. So, like almost every one of these I've talked about for a while, let's start with Conan. Now, particularly the expansions came in, the, uh, um, the three big box expansions. You've got the Stygian one, half designed by Bruno Catala, a very prominent designer. This is like an Egyptian theme. You're, uh, you're trying to find Conan in this dark tomb. Um, there's ninjas running around, there's scorpions, giant scorpions, um, <coughs> and some really cool mechanics, having to crawl through uh, wells to get from one level down to a lower one. Uh, there's secret passages all over the place, and then like every Conan board on the other side has a little port village. I've played the first scenario of all three of the big box expansions and it just reinforces why I love Conan so much. It's about as a mare trash as it gets with the hack and slash dice rolling, but it's layered with a brilliant Euro mechanic in gem management. You can mitigate almost all of the luck with the awesome gem management system. I got to bring this out to uh, the local game store the other week and I had a full complement of five players and everyone but my brother never had any idea what Conan was like and they were all raving about it after this game. So if you just don't like Ameritrash it might not be for you but with the gem management system and how you control your guys it really allows for smart decision making. I always I always reference that movie Tin Cup when I'm playing it. Kevin Costner is trying to hit his ball across the lake and he keeps missing and it's splooshing in the water, splooshing in the water. I get that from Conan because you can you can put some of your gems into re-rolling dice and you have to know when to just accept a miss. I'm generally stubborn and I'm just going to keep putting gems in until I've got none left or I get the result I want. But knowing when to just let a guy take damage or a minion die and when to put your gems into a play is a huge part of this game and it's probably overlooked by a lot of people. I talk about Conan all the time so I won't go too much into detail but the expansions with new minis, new boards and new scenarios is just great and Monolith is going to be releasing more Conan in the future, so that is always good. More big box expansions. They're rebooting their Kickstarter. For anyone that missed out on the first one, they're going to have limited quantities of the King's Pledge, the original Conan Kickstarter. All right, so moving on. Um, this little game, uh, also de designed by Bruno Catala, one of the designers of the, uh, the Stygian expansion for Conan. It's a little tile laying game for two to four players, but man is this a little cool game. The idea is you have these little uh, domino tiles. They're, uh, they've got different terrain symbols on them. So there's desert, there's forest, there's uh, river and plains. There might be a fifth one. Um, and you, they're in order, one, two, three, four, from top down. The idea is you take one of your meeples, you're going to put it on a tile that you want to add to your little tableau. Once you take a tile, you're going to take that meeple and you're going to get the selection of the next round of four. So let me, let me explain a little bit better. You're going to have four tiles, say there's four players, Okay, that's the current tiles. Then you're going to have four tiles, which is the next round of tiles. Whoever's meeple is closer to the top gets first pick. They're going to take their meeple off and the tile they picked, and then they're going to put their meeple on the one they're going to want next round. If they really want the fourth one down, 
Well, that means they're going to get last pick next round, right? So there's a nice balance between getting what you want and getting first pick next round. Now you add it to your little castle, it's a single tile, and then after that, you're making a five by five grid, and at least one of your terrains that you picked from has to line up with something else. At the end of the game, you're gonna get points for each of your connected terrain tiles multiplied by the number of crowns. Some of the tiles have little crown symbols on it. Um, it's incredibly simple and it's got some nice depth. It's really just a lovely game. King Domino. If you like tile lighting games like Carcassonne, then I think you're, you're gonna love this. Uh, King Domino, elegant, simple, quick to play. We're talking 15 minutes and it's got some depth. Um, all right, third game I'm going to talk about, Terraforming Mars. I got to play this twice now. I taught my eight-year-old son, um, and the game went pretty good, and I liked it. And then the next day, my son asked if we can play again, so I thought that was great. This game, it's a map of Mars. Now, the components aren't all that. You flimsy player boards, the graphic design on the board isn't that great. Uh, but that aside, uh, the key... The cubes and stuff like that are not too bad at all. But I mean, graphic design and components aside, it's a really cool game. Every player is doing what the game is called, trying to terraform Mars. You've got this huge stack of cards. Every single one of them is different with different artwork on all of them. You're buying new cards every round. You're, uh, you're drawing some cards and you're going to pay for the ones you want to keep. And then you're adding these uh, cards to the tableau and they're going to start building your engine because your colony is producing uh, metal and heat and gold. And after three objectives have been met, that ends the game and everybody counts out your score. Um, the objectives are bringing the oxygen to the oxygen meter to the max. We're laying down all of the river tiles. And the third thing is we are raising the temperature. Now certain cards that you're gonna play are gonna have benefits based on where the oxygen is at, where the temperature is at. Um, we're gonna be putting uh, these things into play, water tiles, uh, you're gonna be playing cards that'll let you raise the temperature. Everything just comes together really well. I'm really looking forward to introducing this game to my wife because this is her jam. I, I tell her it's like Imperial Settlers. You're building a colony of civilization. So I will uh, report back in another vlog and I'll let you know what she thinks and I'll give you some more on what I think of the game as I've only played it a couple of times now. I know first impressions, first and second impressions is very positive. It's a great Euro game. And the last game I'm gonna talk about is a cool mini or not game, Gekaido. It's another robot fighting game in the vein of Ultimate Warriors, King of Tokyo. I like these fun little battle games. Everybody's on a little, uh, little tiny grid of a board. The idea is you, you can Move into position to attack, which you have to do if you're not next to another robot. And then you're rolling dice with symbols on it. And you're essentially locking these dice into a certain move you want to pull, um, like poker hands. So if you get five of a kind, you're going to do like 12 damage to a robot next to you. Conversely, if you don't get everything you're going for, with your three rolls, then you're gonna do damage to yourself. So you can go for like two pairs, you're only gonna do a little bit of damage, but there's little risk to you. And that's all well and good, but I think the game really comes alive with the, uh, the deck of special abilities. There's certain tile indicators or moves you can perform that'll let you draw these cards from the deck. And I think the smart card play mixed with the poker hands, dice rolling, 
brings this game to life. I don't love it yet. I've played it uh, a couple of times. Once with my son. Three times I played it. I played it twice with just me and my son and once with my wife and my son. My wife was pretty meh on it, but uh, she generally has to play something a couple of times and really get the nuances of the game before she forms her opinion. I suppose I'm the same way. But uh, the first impression is, yeah, it's cool. I like it. I need to, I need to get some more games in before I can really uh, pinpoint where this one's at for me. All right, well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm Jason Peacock. Look for more of these in the future. If you like what I'm doing, give me that thumb. And if you're new here, please subscribe. And if you have any comments at all, please leave them down below. I read them all. So thanks everyone. Goodbye and I'll talk to you soon.